I forgot to explain the S in S expression. Uh, the S expression is a data structure we have seen made of atoms and concepts, okay? Uh, why is it called S expression? Well, the S stands for syntax, okay? And now you understand perfectly why this name is reasonable. Because the uh, these kind of expressions are used also for the syntax of the program, okay? And for a data structure, but the, it, it's both, okay? Syntax and da data at the same time. Well, okay. Uh, we were saying that the, probably the, the most elegant way of using Lisp is with uh, recursive functions instead of using all mm, style loops like in traditional languages. Uh, let's make the canonical example is the factorial function. Uh, what is the factorial? Well, the factorial of six, for example, mm, written like this. This is mathematical notation, not this notation. Okay, six uh, bang bang is the factorial function. Is six by five by four by times uh, times three times two times one. Let's say. Okay. So this product is the product of all the uh, positive integer numbers starting from the argument of the function down to 1. Good? So the factorial of 10 is 10 times 9 times 8, etc. Mm, well, this is clearly a recursive function. It's very easy to see that if we say that by definition we have that one factorial, no, sorry, the zero factorial hmm, is one, then you can say that m factorial is, what, what should it be? Let's make a recursive, a recursive definition. m plus no, m, m multiplied by m minus one. Factorial. Yeah. Okay, so it is n times n minus one factorial. Okay, you can s clearly see that six factorials is just like six times five factorial. Good? So this expands to a bigger uh, multiplication and then at the end we, were, we are going to have this. Good? Well, let's write this definition of the factorial. <coughs> uh, it's quite easy. You just have to write open, defund, Fact or factorial, well, let's say factorial. Open parenthesis, n close. If n is zero, then the result is one, the definition. Otherwise, it is the product of n and the factorial of n minus one. So otherwise, it is the product of n and the factorial of the subtraction of n and 1 goes, 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 goes. Is it correct? Okay. Uh, with Emacs, you don't have the problem of counting parentheses. <coughs> whenever you close a parenthesis, the, the magic open parenthesis blinks. Okay? It's much easier to write this code. Another uh, the feature of Emacs I forgot to mention before is the automatic indentation. It's very useful. When you write Lisp code and you, have, and you are in the upper page major mode, uh, you can just write, you can just hit tab on a line and the code will be indented automatically the right way. So if you write this line, then you hit enter to, to, to place the cursor here, then you write tab, okay? Your cursor will move to the correct position. If there is already some code of that right, the code will be moved. Hmm? So we tried. So we can learn the correct indentation also by experiment, by, by trying with Emacs. Good. So this is the a global definition of a function. You can, te you can test it and you can evaluate factorial of 10. Does it work? In your opinion, what is what do we get if you evaluate the factorial of minus one? No. Yeah. It is an 
error, but not the uh, of range. Because there is no range check here. Okay? Here we just check whether n is 0 or not. If it's not 0, we multiply n by the factorial of n minus 1. Does it work? another call of factorial inside. If this call of factorial becomes very large, then we are overflowing stack somewhere. Okay? There's a stack in the for the, this. Um, well, there is a little mathematical uh, subtlety here, but it's not so important for you now. Uh, it is possible to write <coughs> factorial in a different way so that you don't use a big part of the stack. Okay, you can use a constant part of the stack instead of a growing part of the stack. It is not the case for this definition, but it is possible to write a, a slightly more complex definition for that. It's not important now. What I want you to understand is that mm, recursive calls cost space in the stack. I'm not speaking about time, I'm speaking about space. Okay? Mm, and the factorial of minus one, it uh, requires an infinite quantity of stack, okay? Because the factorial of minus one will be minus one times the factorial of minus two, which is minus two times minus three times minus four. There is no end, okay? In theory, in practice it wraps around, but we don't care about that. So uh, it requires a, a, an infinite part of, part of the stack, and I want you to, to, to see that the stack is finite, okay? So if, you, if your recursion is very deep, if your recursive call terminates, even if it terminates, mm, this doesn't terminate, but even if your call terminates, it will consume some, sp some part of the stack which will be freed only when you return. Okay? It is temporary. Okay? After the end of the calls, mm, after this big expansion, the stack will contract back. Mm. I speak about the implementation. This is not visible to the language, but the interpreter works like that. Uh, so you must always remember when you make a recursive call that you cannot go too deep. This is a problem you don't have with iteration, but you have it with recursion. Good? So uh, with Emacs, uh, you should not go very deep. Okay? With other implementation, of, of least you can, but not with Emacs. It was just a note. Okay, anyway, it's very useful to, to work with this. It, the code tends to be smaller and more readable. Instead of using a let and a y, this, uh, this recursive definition should be more readable normally for most people. Good. Uh, what else? Well, this is a function. You can use it from your programs, but not directly uh, as a Niemann's command. Instead, we would like to have some. Uh, some code that you can directly uh, bind to a Emacs uh, command. Let's do it. It's very simple. Let's take a function. Uh, well, uh, let's write a very stupid function which takes a number and prints the factorial on the mini buffer. Okay? How do we do? How do we do it? We call the command foo. It's an old list tradition. We say that foo is a function. of one parameter, we call it n, which is interactive. It's interactive, and then I write a prompt here. I will explain this in a, in a minute. Please write blah, 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 a number. Empty space here. Close. Then we write who, whatever, uh, message. Mm. 
message or format like before. Of percent guess factorial of n and that's all. Close. Okay. This is a very simple function. This just takes a number, calls factorial on, on it, and prints the result on the main buffer. Uh, the interesting thing is that after you evaluate this definition with control X, control E, as usual, uh, you will get a new Emacs command. And you will be able to call it with meta X foo or control X foo. Tactile memory, Jose was speaking about. Okay, it's meta x foo. Good. Okay, so does it have a this, this is for me, uh, memory space? Because if you put a number bigger than 10, if you big put a number bigger than 10, you get <coughs> the same problem as this. Okay? Why? Because the stack by default is very small. Mm -hmm. You can, you can uh, resize it. Uh, I think the default, personally, I think the default should be changed. It's a little too small. Okay, so However, it is easy to change it. Uh, in your error message, you, would s you should see uh, a number. N nesting depth uh, exceeds some number. No, no. This is a global variable in Emacs which says how long the stack is. Ca you can evaluate it, of course. You can write this, control X, control E. What do you get? What is the default value? I don't know. Mm -hmm. because the factorial grows very fast, so we, you will not be able to get an exact integer result. That's not the point here. Uh, in Emacs, uh, the, the, the distinction between several types of numbers is fuzzy. Mm. Numbers are, are automatically converted from one type to another when needed. And the, in, if you were trying to make a computation with a very big integer number, it will be automatically converted into a float, and everything will continue to work. Yeah. You would lose precision, of course, but it's very easy to use that way. Okay, so have you tried to use foo? If you write meta x foo, you will see a prompt in the mini buffer, which will call you, which will ask you to please write a number. Okay, this n means that we are expecting a number as a parameter of the command. This is not just a function. You can also, also use it as a function, but it's, it has become an, an Emacs command because of this interactive clause, which must be at the beginning of the, of the definition. Good? Uh, well, this is one way of calling the, the function, the Emacs the command, sorry, but there is also a nicer way. You can write control X U, or control U, no, control U. Sorry, that's it. Okay. You can write, for example, <coughs> control U 10, Mm, one zero meta x 
foo. This way, you will not get the prompt, and you will direct, directly pass this parameter to the function. Okay? Of course, this only works when the, the, the function has a, param has a number uh, as parameter. Okay? It does not work with a string. It's clear. If you want to, to have a string instead of a number, you have to write a different interactive, uh, a different string here for interactive. In the manual, you will find every possibility. In practice, you can use any as expression with the right, with the right uh, interactive string. This way, you can pass a parameter to a command. It is useful sometimes. Okay? Let's make a stupid deductive example. Control U uh, 10 Meta X Hanoi. Never tried it? H A N O I. Yeah. Does it work? How many disks do you see? Ten. Okay? Because Hanoi is a command which takes a number as a parameter. Okay? Just like our foo example. Good? Hanoi is written in Emacs list. Uh, we also have some more spectacular examples like Tetris. And uh, it is quite instructive to look at their source code because it's typically quite short and simple. Mm? It's a good example of programming sometimes. But you should change the function because isn't it interactive? Uh, it is it is no, it is still interactive. It is still interactive because when you don't pass the, the parameter like this, it asks you uh, to try something in the, in the mini buffer. Yeah, it's also asking you. It's always asking. It's always asking. It's always yeah. Oh, so what is the correct way of writing that? Well, to me, uh, to me, it works. Yeah. Okay. So even if you give the number, even if you pass the number with Control U, yeah, yeah. for me it works. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is very easy. Uh, control U. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No. Oh wait. Yeah. 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 No, but, but, but I don't know why. But, but the, with the other one, it works. With Hanoi, it works. Okay, so let's look at the source code of Hanoi. And let's look. This is free software, it works like that.
This is the interactive version, it, uh, how it is used in Hanoi. Uh, well, this is a little different because uh, if we don't give a parameter, it uses a default value, three rings in the case of Hanoi. We could also do it with foo, like that. Uh, otherwise, I don't know, we should be able to write a prompt here some way. Well, there's a chapter on the Emacs with mail for that. I honestly don't know. However, uh, you got the idea of of using interactive uh, functions as commands. Uh, this is useful, but it's not probably the, the most common case. The most common case is, it work, is to work with regions. Okay, uh, You remember from yesterday that the region uh, is the position of the mark and the um, point. Okay, So the region is essentially two numbers. And you write a function of two parameters, n and m, or point or mark, call it how you want. And you say interactive r instead of n for regions. Uh, that is very useful for, well, also, for example, to, to swap the point and the mark, as you, uh, as you saw yesterday with uh, meta x, meta x, or control x, control x, that one. Okay? When you swap the, the point and the mark. Right, right now, you would be able to implement it. Okay? It is a very small function like this, where you just set, you just move the, the point to the other position of the mark, and vice versa. Good. Okay, we should talk about lambda, but it is not so essential. Well, the only thing I want to tell you is that functions are values. Okay? You can write something like this. What is lambda? N plus N1. This is a function. And you can use it as a value. Okay? If you evaluate this, you Emacs will tell you this is a procedure or something like that. Okay, but it is a value. And the interesting thing is that you can put procedures like that in two data structures. For example, you can make a list of lambdas, a, li a list of procedures. Okay, let's try to understand this. What what does it mean? It's very simple. This is an anonymous procedure. Okay, we didn't give it a name. We didn't write the full just uh, wrote that it is a function with one parameter called n, and this is the body. That's all. Okay? So it, it is just like if I say the, uh, given n, I will return plus n1. Okay? For some n. So this is an, an anonymous function. And you can do funny things like cons of a lambda. Well, lambda n, n returns the parameter unchanged. Okay. Cons, lambda uh, n, 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 nil, for example. What is this? This is a list with a lambda here, with a procedure, and nil. So this is a list of one element with a procedure inside. Okay? This is very useful, and it is done in, uh, in several places in Linux. Mm, because you can store your own procedures to customize some functionality. And uh, <coughs> this feels unusual if you are not uh, used to functional programming, but uh, you should not fear it. Functions are values like the others, like numbers. There's really no difference. Okay, that is good. We could write a last example of a recursive function, and then I will stop. Uh, another very canonical example is the length of a list. Okay, I will take, I will keep this. Okay, let's take an example. Let's work with this list. A T nil and nil. Okay? So this is the list A T nil. This nil is the last element of the list, okay? It is not the terminator. You get it? Good. 
So this is just the same as usual as a dot cons of d dot cons of nil cons a. Good. I didn't shift the stuff. Okay, let's take a f a, let's write a procedure, a function, which takes a list and returns the its length. So it's recursive, of course. Defend length of list. What is the length of nil? Zero. So if the list is z is nil, well there is a function called null which returns true if, if the if the list is empty. Okay? So we can use that. It's predefined. So if the list is null, is nil, we return zero. Otherwise what would we return? We return one plus the length of uh, what? We we have already counted this. We have to count all the rest. Okay? What is this? The rest of the list. How is it called? Is the coder. Okay? It's the right side. So it is one plus the length of the rest of the list. So of the coder of the list. Right, close, 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 close. Good. This should work. And you can test it like this. Length of quote, this is very important, plus one, two, for example. Hmm? Yes. So this will be result of this? Hmm? There is an error, why? <laughs> type argument. Type argument of what? Uh, don't look at, uh, at Emacs. Think of it. It's quite easy. Well, is the list uh, so what is the parameter? It's plus one, two, which, which is three. Okay, this is evaluated. There is no quote here. So I, I say the length of three. Well, is three the empty list? No. So we go here, and it, it is the sum of one and the length of the coder of three. Don't you see a problem here? What is the coder of three? That is an error, of course. Coder works with concepts, not with numbers. Okay? So it's a type error for coder. Hmm? Good. Well, you can play with, with uh, uh, functions like this for, for a long time. For example, you can reverse a list. You can, you can append, concatenate to lists, stuff like that. And uh, you will see that uh, lists are used, for example, as dictionaries in Emacs, very commonly. You will have lists like a is bound to something, B is bound to something else, okay? This can be a cons or it can be a list of two elements, as I say, it depends on the convention. And you can write functions to, to work with this kind of dictionaries. For example, you can say, given this dictionary, tell me what's the value of B. Mm -hmm. And the function will recurse down the list and look for the correct binding. It's very similar to a let, okay? And the let is implemented like this, but this is a data structure. So you can, do, so this is an idea for customizing uh, some functionality of Emacs. Well, when you can give parameters, uh, you can very often give a value for several symbols or variables or names of features. Mm. 
uh, I should have something like that for, for fonts in my Italy my side. Well. Okay, I think that's all for me. Jose will have surely something to say later or tomorrow, I don't know.